This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday, July 2nd, 2013. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to World Magazine, a Christian girl fled Pakistan with her family after a Muslim cleric falsely accused her of burning pages from the Quran. After spending months in hiding, Immigration Minister Jason Kenney said Rimsha Masi and her family are now in Canada. Masi was arrested in August in Islamabad after the cleric made the accusation. He was later accused of fabricating the evidence and she was acquitted. But those accused of blasphemy against Islam in Pakistan are often subject to vigilante justice. Mobs have been known to attack and kill people accused of blasphemy, and two prominent politicians who have discussed changes to the blasphemy laws have been killed. The girl left Pakistan with her parents, three sisters, and a brother on March 14th. A Muslim cleric who lobbied for her release said Masi had been facing threats and was moving constantly. Second today, according to the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, Billy Graham's Rapid Response Team chaplains are en route to Prescott, Arizona, where a wildfire has killed 19 firefighters, members of an elite hotshot crew, working to stop the spread of a massive blaze 100 miles northwest of Phoenix. Jack Monday, International Director of the Response Team, said our hearts go out to the families of those firefighters as well as to the fire station. The firefighters were killed on Sunday night while battling the Yarnell Hill Fire in central Arizona. The loss of 19 crew members made Sunday the deadliest day for firefighters in the U.S. since the 9-11 attacks in 2001. According to Al Jazeera, the Egyptian president, Mohamed Morsi, has said he will not step down as demanded by millions of protesters, vowing to protect his constitutional legitimacy with his life. Addressing the nation in a speech carried live on state television late on Tuesday, Morsi accused loyalists of his predecessor, Hosni Mubarak, of riding the current waves of protests to topple his regime. Morsi has received an ultimatum from the military to work out his differences with the opposition by Wednesday, or it will intervene to oversee the implementation of its own political roadmap. Morsi demanded earlier that the army withdraw the ultimatum, saying that he will not be dictated to. The army has published a plan to dissolve parliament, rewrite the constitution, and hold new elections if the protests are not ended by Wednesday. Fourth today, according to United Press International, America's NBC television network says it has ordered A.D. Beyond the Bible, a miniseries from the Bible producers Mark Burnett and Roma Downey. The announcement was made on Monday by Jennifer Salk, president of NBC Entertainment, and Bob Greenblatt, chairman. Salk said that NBC is thrilled to bring this highly anticipated sequel to Mark and Roma's The Bible to network television. There was huge interest in the project within the television community, and NBC is gratified by Mark's confidence in our ability to partner with him and position this miniseries as true event television. Burnett and Downey said the new series, A.D. Beyond the Bible, is another massive project and a major commitment. But it's a story that has to be told. It's a story that changed the world. We look forward to making this an enormous television event on NBC. Fifth today, according to EEW Magazine, three-time Grammy Award winner Pastor Donnie McClurkin will soon be proclaiming the gospel of peace through song on the Island of Peace. The well-loved international singer, preacher, and BET Sunday Best host is set to headline the Ghana Stand Up and Worship concert on Saturday, July 13th at the Johan John Sports Stadium. The pastor of New York's Perfecting Church will be welcomed by Ghanaian believers. Approximately 69% of the country's population identifies as Christian. Ghana News Media said he will be joined by international worship leaders Muthunzi Namba from South Africa, Yuche Aguye from Nigeria, and other gospel artists for the event. Six today, according to USA Today News, the Obama administration announced on Tuesday that it is delaying until 2015 the requirement that businesses with more than 50 employees 
provide health insurance to their workers or pay a penalty. The announcement by the IRS comes after numerous complaints from businesses that the requirements were too complicated and difficult to implement in time. Business groups, such as the National Retail Federation, praised the delay while Congressional Republicans jumped on the move to reiterate their opposition to the 2010 health care law. Other key parts of the law, including the health exchanges where individuals can buy insurance, are on schedule. The exchanges will open on October 1st, according to Valerie Jarrett, a senior advisor to President Obama. Seven today, according to the Associated Press, China will join Russia later this week for its largest ever naval drills with a foreign partner, underlining deepening ties between the former Cold War rivals along with Beijing's desire for closer links with regional militaries. China has long been a key customer for Russian military hardware, but only in the last decade have their militaries begun taking part in joint exercises. China's defense ministry said on Tuesday that its navy would send four destroyers, two guided missile frigates, and a support ship for the exercises, which start on Friday in the Sea of Japan and run until July 12th. Eighth today, according to DallasNews.com, Oprah Winfrey will be in Dallas, Texas next month to record an episode of her series, Oprah's Life Class, before a live audience. Winfrey's taping at 9.30 a.m. on August 29th will kick off the three-day Megafest Christian Convention, which is being organized by Bishop T.D. Jakes. Jakes will join Winfrey during the taping, according to a press release from Megafest. Tickets for the taping in American Airlines Center start at $60 and will be available starting at noon on Friday. Ninth today, according to Bay State Banner, U.S. bankruptcy judge Frank J. Bailey ordered attorneys for both the Charles Street AME Church and One United Bank to submit briefs that could offer the legal basis to liquidate all of the church's assets in order to satisfy more than $5 million in church debt. In the surprising order, Judge Bailey also asked the attorneys to consider whether the appointment of a U.S. trustee or an examiner to monitor the day-to-day -day church operation would violate the separation of church and state. The order was made after last week's trial involving the church's proposed repayment plan and financial reorganization. The trial also heard arguments on One United's motion to dismiss the church's bankruptcy petition outright. Judge Bailey has not made a ruling on either, but has set a July 16th deadline for the briefs. Bailey also said that closing arguments in the case are scheduled for July 22nd. Tenth and finally today, according to the Associated Press, a federal judge on Monday postponed the sentencing hearing for former Illinois Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr. and his wife, noting it was being done to accommodate the court and not at the request of the couple's attorneys or the prosecution. U.S. District Judge Amy Berman Jackson in Washington, D.C., posted a brief note on the court's docket, saying Wednesday's hearing for the Chicago Democrat and his wife would be held later. She did not set a new date. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read all about these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God loves you. He always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.